What is up everybody? It's your boy, the Lo-Fi Horror Guy, coming at you with another video. Today, I am bringing you a suggestion to me for a top five horror movie sequels of all time, uh, as far as my favorites. So we're gonna kick things off. Um, I actually have six because five and six I was kind of conflicted with. With each movie, I am going to give a five word film synopsis, um, you know, as far as uh, somebody brought it to my attention to maybe kind of to, to, to include what the movie was about and such. I'm just gonna make a funny little film synopsis and you can take it from there. Starting with number five and a half slash six, we are going with Toby Hooper's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. I loved it, I have always loved it. Um, it's always been a favorite of mine, it's silly. You got old girl DJ Stretch. Um, you got Dennis Hopper. Toby Hooper actually made this, which was weird because the first one was so grimy and just disgusting in general. Um, the first time I saw it, it literally made me sick. Um, so I was a little hesitant when I first rented this to watch this. Um, it turned out more funny than silly. Um, I'm going to give my, uh, my five word film synopsis for this is going to be, uh, Chop Top Had Me Rolling. Chop Top might be in one word, I don't know, but Chop Top Had Me Rolling. We'll make it two just for the sake of it. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, that is at number, well, we'll go with five and a half. Number five, now we're digging into it. Um, King Kong vs. Godzilla. I have always loved this movie since I was a little kid. Um, monster movies are particularly my favorite, but this one here um, always, always stuck with me. Uh, you know, King Kong and Godzilla were kind of like my original loves as far as monsters go. Monsters have generally been my favorite type of genre, subgenre for horror. Um, honestly, I couldn't even tell you who the director was, who the editor was, who wrote it, who played the, in the costumes. I've just always loved it. It's always been one of those movies that um, has just been so entertaining and silly. You got the, the old King Kong on the back here with the train holding over just gloriously, just about to destroy the world. So, King Kong vs. Godzilla. The five word synopsis, um, I would say for King Kong vs. Godzilla would be, um, how about go Godzilla, go. And that's all. That's, a five, that's, the, that's five words about that, you know? Go, go Godzilla, go. And that's all. That's all she wrote. Okay, number four we're gonna go with here. Uh, sadly, I don't have a single disc version of the movie, but I do have it on physical and it is my favorite out of all of the movies, in fact, to be honest. If we're being honest here, eye contact, if we're being honest, Leprechaun 3, come on. Hold on, hold on. You're telling me that you don't love Leprechaun 3. It takes place in Las Vegas. Leprechaun, this goofy little creature, goes to Las Vegas of all places shooting craps. He plays a preacher on TV, ends up blowing up old girl's boobs. Uh, you know, he's, he's jumping on the pogo stick on the guy in the, in the, in the pawn shop. I actually went to Las Vegas and was sad that the pawn shop that was in this movie wasn't even in existence anymore, not even thought of. Um, my five word for Leprechaun 3, my five word synopsis. Uh, let's see. Leprechaun is in Las Vegas. That's five words right there. Bam. That's all I'm going to say. Loved it. Um, coming in at number three. Three. And this is a big one here. We're going to go with Sam Raimi's Army of Darkness. Now, we're going to, we might have a little bit of button heads here because Evil Dead 2 obviously is awesome. Um, I have an Evil Dead 2 tattoo if you can see that there i love evil dead 2 i love the whole evil dead series but this one had a lot of that slapstick humor a lot of the three stooges poking in the eyes and the skeleton guys coming at them and um you know sam raimi did awesome in this as far as you know with what uh uh, uh he had available to him um you know as far as special effects and such but uh, the whole Bone Army and uh, Bruce Campbell, 
obviously did amazing in this and the whole part where he's like the giant and all the little ashes are running around and whatnot. Army of Darkness has always been a movie that I will hold near and dear to me and love. And this is coming in at number three for top five uh, horror sequels. Yeah. Okay. So we're getting hot here. We're getting hot and heavy. Uh, we are coming in at our top two for our horror sequels. This was kind of tough um, if we're just being honest, but uh, we are going to go for number two uh, is going to have to be, and I'm going to make it publicly known here, this was a tough one, but Halloween 2. Halloween 2. Now, for me, if we're being honest, and I'm trying to be honest with you guys, this might be my favorite Halloween of all time. I love Halloween 1, the original one. Obviously, you can't remake that. You can't make a sequel that's going to compare. But as far as just the general pace of the movie, what was going on, the whole Halloween, you know, Michael Myers stalking in the hospital, killing the nurses uh, on the chase for Lori. This movie was sick. I loved it. Um, excuse me. Um, as far as like my, some of my oldest memories of watching scary movies was around Halloween time. And my parents had a, uh, a TV probably about this big and I'd go in their bedroom and watch uh, movies on USA I believe it was was the network I'd go in and I'd watch scary movies on there and it'd be you know the edited or version or whatever but I remember the original Halloween's watching those dang near every Halloween and absolutely loving them Halloween 2 was just to me just a step above for some reason I just I loved it it was brutal it was well paced um, and my five word synopsis for Halloween 2 would be Halloween, but set in a hospital. It's kind of six words, but we're working on it. Okay, Halloween 2. Now, for a drum roll, please. Number one, the top one, the mucho de bigo, mucho de besto, which in English translates to the best movie sequel to me, to your boy, lo-fi horror guy, is going to come in with, uh, we're going pretty uh, pretty deep, pretty risky, but I absolutely love this movie. I could not pass up saying that this is my favorite sequel of all, of, of, of all horror movies um, to date. We're going to go with Michael Gornick's Creep Show 2. Creep Show 2. Uh, now, the original Creep Show, we will start by saying, is also one of my favorite movies. I love anthology movies. That's that and monster movies are probably my sub my favorite subgenre of horror movies. Um, I love the short stories. I love with this one how Tom Savini plays the creep and that whole story with the kid ties into um, the rest of you know telling the rest of the movie. Um, Old Chief Woodhead, the guy you know. Indian cat trying to go to Hollywood, uh, gets scalped. Absolutely just, there's some, some key stuff in that movie that is just awesome. Uh, there is, um, the, the next story after that is, uh, the raft. Um, and the raft is, you know, these kids get caught on a raft out in the middle of the lake and there's some blob attacking them. There's another one that's the hitchhiker. The guy's just trying to get a ride and then kind of starts stalking her and almost becomes like supernatural or something and is continuously saying, thanks for the ride, lady. And then popping up and like, thanks for the ride, lady. And then, you know, kind of one of these and like, thanks for the ride, lady. You know, all that. Um, I'll just leave my glasses like that. So, <coughs> coming in. And uh, the number one, to me, horror sequel of all time is going to be Creep Show 2. My five word film synopsis for Creep Show 2, uh, I would have to say, is creep, um, statue, uh, blob, hitchhiker, and banging. 
we'll just go with that. That's just, that's going to be your general synopsis. And if you like that synopsis, go ahead and let me know, hit a comment below. Uh, if you like any of these synopsises, let me know. Um, I enjoy all of these. I enjoy seeing what you guys have to say. Um, this creep show too, really quick, if I can say, was kind of cool. It comes with this, the 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 old sleeve that that uh, numbers and mentions all the chapters. I've always thought that's really cool. But behind the disc here, it's a clear uh, case. It's got some general information about the movie behind the scenes stuff. Um, but yeah. Like I say, if you guys have any other ideas or any suggestions of other videos I should do or top fives, top tens, I can go on as far as these being my top five favorite, but there's tons of other movies that came to mind as far as what, uh, you know, were best sequels. I could do like another video, including these with a top 10, um, cause it was pretty tough. You know, you've got like Friday the 13th, you've got phantasms, you've got, you know, so on and so forth. We're not going to break it down because I'm going to ruin the next video. But that was my top five horror sequels of all time. Um, really quick, if I can give a quick shout out to a band, Chicago Native Harm's Way. They just released this on Metal Blade called Post Human. If you get a chance to check it out, uh, there's a track called Last Man, which is the second track that is banging thing is just absolutely tough uh probably my favorite track on the whole album is a song called temptation where very slow kind of laid back and then at the end there's just this nuts chugging that turns into uh just a pummeling steady bass drum beat and just blows up uh harm's way definitely a big thumbs up uh i could not say enough of that band i love that band I love you guys. I love horror. Um, without further ado, I guess I'm going to go ahead and say, give me a ding, give me a dong, give me a bing, give me a bong, give me a like, give me a share. Really, I do not care. Uh, I'm just here to have a nice scare with all of you fine folks. This is your boy, the lo-fi horror guy, and I'm signing off saying three, two, one.